All right, so what I'm going to talk about in this video is formal stresses. These are, you know, this actually happens uh, quite often in engineering systems. A lot of things really are engines or uh, energy conversion type of systems uh, or even electronics packages. They experience uh, big temperature changes and then as we know when uh, most metals heat up, they expand, and because of the expansion and the way that it's strained, very often thermal stresses arise, and a lot of times these can be the primary mode of failure for systems. Uh, so let's talk about it a little bit. So I, mean, I think everyone understands what it is stated. So, uh, materials when they heat up, there's an associated expansion. And so we know that. But let's just consider, to motivate how we analyze this, let's look at two systems. Okay, here's the first one. Let's just consider a bar, cross-sectional area of 25 square millimeters. Let's say it's made out of steel. So the terms modulus is 200 gigapascals. And Thermal expansion coefficient, which is normally uh, given Greek letter alpha, is steel is 12 to the minus 6. And the units on this is going to be uh, strain units, or in other words, millimeter per millimeter over temperature. There's really one over degree second, but it's extreme at degree second. It's 21 at degree second. And let's assume that this has one meter. So we have to be a little easier. All right. So um, let's give it a temperature increase. Now, the way the thermal expansion coefficient works is um, thermal strength is equal to alpha, the thermal expansion coefficient, times the temperature. And now, uh, these thermal strains are actually normal strains, and they're in all axes. So although we're, we're talking about 1D problems most often in this class, don't forget that if you have a solid block of material, eraser, and there's a temperature change, it will have a normal strain this direction, this direction, and this direction. All those three strains are going to be equal, assuming it's an isotropic material. It's governed by this. So that means the actual change in length due to the thermal expansion is the original length times the thermal strain, or in other words, L alpha delta T. If you look at the units of this, you can see uh, alpha uh, times the temperature gives you basically a zero. Um, length uh, times 1 over C times C, so it's giving you some just like this. Okay. Likewise here, alpha times delta T, alpha is strain units over temperature, so we have the temperature is strain units. Alright, so if we heat this bar up, we will expand, figure out how many equal to the original length, which is 1 meter, times alpha, which is 12, times 10 to the minus 6, degrees Celsius, and the delta T is 200 degrees Celsius. So, calculate this. Yeah. 
that gives us 2.4 millimeters. Okay, so it expands 2.4. Now the interesting thing here is this is like a free expansion case. And so uh, there actually is no stress. So we have a strain. There is no stress acting on it. Now, if we take the, actually the same bar and give it the same temperature, let's change the boundary conditions, you get a different thing. Take the same bar, but now instead of it just sitting on top of the table, let's imagine it's fixed at both ends. Still is one meter, all the other properties are the same. Still sees the uh, temperature change of 200 degrees Celsius. Now, these ends are fixed, so the strain obviously has to be equal to it. So what's going on here? Why is this not obeying this law? And the other thing, I think we've all seen this with uh, shattered wind shields and other situations. In this situation, intuitively, is a strain. I mean, sorry, there is a stress that arises. So where does that come from if there's no strain? Well, you know, I think physically you can think of this. What happens here in this situation is there is a, this bar wants to expand by this amount, 2.4 millimeters. But then what happens is the wall pushes in on what the force to make it compress back 2.4 millimeters. So think about what's going on. This is going to expand out. So we want to expand out. Let's like move this wall fixed. Okay? So we want to move out at 2.4 millimeters. But what happens is the wall exerts a force back on it. That's such that it can move back. That same that same 2.4 millimeters. And it's that force that gives you the stress, right? Alright, so that's this is one of these problems that people have, right? So you know you can think of it in that manner. That you can actually do that. So you can say, okay, it would expand and then the reaction force is the one that would contract by two such that times the length with a equal negative 2.4. See that? So I've just used the elongation equation here for the wall force, internal force, right? That's the force in the special times the length of the That's equal. So it's saying the wall forces enough to make that free expansion go back to no stretch. Okay. Uh, that, that's one way to think of these problems. I, I think actually that can be a little confusing at times. Uh, let's think of it in another manner. And I think this is really a more common way of doing this sort of stuff. And actually, this kind of helps the problem. So when we talk about strain, there's really going to be three types of strains. Um, one is the measured strain. Okay? This is the strain you actually see. And it's a change in length over length. Now, that measured strain is going to break into two parts. One is a mechanical strain. This is the strain that's going to give you stress. That's actually the strain that stress is equal to Young's modulus times the mechanical uh, strain. Now, if okay, the last one is the thermal strain expansion. So, if there is no delta. Is no thermal strain, then the measured is the mechanical. 
and everything we've gone up to here actually in that situation. So we never made any distinction. Right? This, 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 okay. All right. So if there's no alpha, if there's no delta t. Likewise, if there's no mechanical stress, as in this situation, right, there is no force on the field, then, in this, in this case, in this situation, it's free to expand. There's no forces acting on it. So, mechanical strain goes to zero. So, in this case, measure equals the thermal, which is what we get, which is exactly what we did here. Okay? Exactly what we did. It's just the alpha delta. In this situation, uh, the measured strength goes to zero because of the constraints. So the measured strength Two, kind of space. Case two, yeah. Case two, measured is equal to zero. All right. So that means that mechanical strain equal to the negative of the thermal strain, which is minus alpha delta t. Okay. In this situation, that would be yeah, that would be negative point zero zero two four right? So that, that's interesting, right? So we raise the temperature, so it expands. But using this uh, additive decomposition of the strain, you can see that we can determine that the mechanical strain is negative of the thermal strain. So it is negative 0.0024. All right? Now that you know that strain, you can take that, put it into here, and get the actual stress. So the stress in that specimen is the Young's modulus, 200 gigapascals times the strain, which is minus 0, 0.0024, and that's going to give us 4, right? allows me to figure out the sign and all those things. So for simple problems, it's quite easy to kind of do it in this approach. Right? But as the problems become a little more nuanced, and I'll do some examples in class, um, it makes sense to think of it in this term, these terms. Okay? So we could also have Mechanical load superimposed upon it. Those will go off into mechanical stress. Okay. That's all I want to talk about.